we say yes to President Bashar al-Assad, says this poster in one of Homs's former rebel strongholds. On Wednesday, the city of Homs votes in the first election since Syria's 10-year war, during which it suffered severe damage, with the centre and other neighbourhoods ruined by airstrikes and barrel bombs. Om Ali, a mother of six, recounts the suffering of those years. We survived on chickpeas and wheat and water. We didn't do laundry like other people. We had no food or drink or anything. We were in a very bad situation. But she'll vote for Assad, she says, 100% with her blood. She's far from alone. Assad's almost certain to win against the two other obscure candidates. His opponents and the West call the election a farce. More posters on destroyed buildings encourage voter turnout, as a bullet in the chest of the aggressor, this one says. Homs was a centre of defiance against Assad, but security forces crushed the protests. Rebel groups took up arms and fighting spread through the city. Mechanic Mohammed Khalaf fled his neighbourhood of al Wa'ir for five years. But he's home, having repaired his house and shop, and he's voting for Assad too. How are we living? Like the rest of the world, we're trying to manage. We're adapting to the situation. Maybe things will go back to what they were, and God will help us with this economy. The staunchly pro-Assad district of Nazha welcomes visitors with a billboard showing men who died fighting in the army. Taylor Mohammed Shamlas lost his son Ali in the war. It's clear who's getting his vote as sitting beneath the poster of Ali and the president's late father Hafez, he sings in praise of Bashar al-Assad. We will forget, by the grace of God, we have to. You have to live with me and I have to live with you in a country that's a home for everyone. Assad has all but crushed the insurgency against him with the support of Russia and Iran. But many have been unable to return to their homes in Homs and other cities and the economy lies in tatters.